Welcome back to Justice for Giancarlo Fizzy Keller in Formula 1 98 and Round 7. Brings us to a circuit that Fizzy was quite fond of during his career, the circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal, Canada. I'm quite fond of this circuit too, purely because it's not Monaco. Surely it cannot be as broken as that was. We are hoping, fingers crossed, and also we find our form as well. Like, this has to be better, right? This is, this has, this has to be, tell me it's better. It has to be, it's better, right? Hmm? In the real life qualifying, it was front row lockout number six for McLaren and a third pole of the season for David Coulthard. Schumacher was third, while Giancarlo Fisichella picked up another fine qualifying result, this time fourth, ahead of Ralph Schumacher, the two Williams of Jacques Villeneuve and Heinz Held Frentzen, with Eddie Irvine in eighth. It is, mercifully, a much better driving experience around here. Again, better within the context of this game. I wouldn't say good general. It helps that in the 90s this track was a little bit more open and flowing. Um, some corners today are like taken in, so they're heavier braking zones. With this being more flowing and more open, it makes it a much more... <sighs> Manageable's not the word. Tolerable. That's the... It was much more tolerable. So in practice, the best I did was like a 118, and already they're down in the 117s. So I might have work to do again. Let's spool forward. Oh, interesting. It's not really dropped much more than those early times. Eddie Irvine, though. Looking like he's going to get pole ahead of Coulthard and Schumacher. Eddie Irvine. He, he only seems to get activated like when you slander him that's like pouring water on a gremlin like it just you just give give him shit and his digital avatar will just burst into life i'm going to put physicella's real life fourth as the target um i think that's doable it would be nice if we could return to pole i didn't like being lower down the grid i can handle not being on pole but that was just it was a nightmare back there <laughs> But I needn't worry, as after just a couple of laps, I was already doing better in Canada than I ever did in Monaco. Now, as you can see, the final chicane, a slightly awkward uh, prospect in this game, and it was slowing me down on my run to the line. But let's go for a flying lap of Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, my fifth of the session. Into turns one and two, like I say, changing direction in this game, slightly awkward, but not so bad as it's a bit more open through turns one and two here but as you can see running the car out a little bit wide and i had to wait for the car to slowly turn for me to carry on the run from turn three all the way through to the end of sector one not too bad at all quite open quite flowing for this game um just using a little bit of additional brake to help turn the car it didn't feel too bad same with turns eight and nine now just use the full width of the track and again, you can carry quite a lot of speed through. Then it's the run up to the hairpin, and the hairpin makes me slightly uncomfortable as the quickest way around is, once again, power sliding. And it was about trying to do that in a controlled manner rather than just throwing the car in and seeing what happens. The run down to the final chicane now, as mentioned, the most awkward corner on this version of the track. The way to take it is just to get it stopped or slowed right down in a straight line. Don't induce any power slidey moments because really, this super slow, ponderous way is the quickest way. Run it out close to the wall, power down, and towards the line. Come on! Yes! Yeah, that final chicane is quite difficult, because I think it's very easy to go into it sideways, kind of like the Nouvelle chicane. Um... And the alternative is to go a lot slower, and I think I lose a lot of time there. Also hate this hairpin, it's just the worst, because you can't even do a controlled power... Like, it's ridiculous you have to do a power slide, but you are kind of leaving it up to the gods Ooh, as to how controlled <laughs> that power slide is. Full, full Colin McRae through there. 
We're back on the top step. Six poles in seven races, and this time ahead of a massively improved Eddie Irvine, um, who's ahead of Coulthard, Hacken and Schumacher displaced down to fifth. Our teammate Verts in sixth, uh, ahead of Frentzen, Alacy, Damon Hill, and Ralph Schumacher. Um, just to prove that uh, normal service is being resumed in terms of the fastest times, uh, yeah, apparently they're going round here about nine seconds quicker in an arrows. In the real 1998 Canadian Grand Prix, it was an eventful race. There were two starts, the first of which ended up with Alex Verts in a barrel roll uh, and a red flag. The second start ended up with a safety car and a handful of retirements, including Mika Hakkinen with a jammed gearbox. Uh, on the restart, Coulthard and Schumacher led away from Fisichella and they just gapped the rest of the field. Uh, but a throttle linkage failure for the Scots left Schumacher in the box seat. However, during the third safety car of the day, Schumacher got a stop-go penalty. Uh, he was coming out of the pits under safety car, he was trying desperately to keep his position, and he essentially forced Frentzen off the road and caused him to retire. Um, but despite that penalty, he still recovered to win ahead of Giancarlo Fisichella, who got his second consecutive second. Sorry, that is, that is correct but it's just bad English. It was his second second in a row. No, that's just as bad. Verts piloted the spare Bennett onto fourth, whilst Jan Magnussen would score his only career point in what would be his final F1 race before being replaced at Stewart by Jos Verstappen. So I do feel okay around this track, but the hairpin and the chicane do concern me. And I think the options are power slide it and risk it, and things could go horribly wrong, or take it slow, er. Uh. Obviously, he finished second in real life, and he liked this track, but we're on pole, and our main rival is third. We gotta go for the win. Gotta go for the win today. Since we're not as consistent as our other rivals, we just gotta get more wins. Oh, the rain has come out to play, despite a full sunshine forecast. Don't know why I'm complaining. We know how it goes, but we're off and running. Oh my goodness, and we've held the lead. Irvine with a poor start. He bogs down. And we lead it to turn one. Oh no, 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 don't do that. Oh, we get away with a big one there. I think we've just had a slide in the middle of the track and no one's been able to get round us. And already though, <laughs> I can't hear any other cars. Wow. Uh, okay. I think the important thing is then, there's no need really to take risks through these corners. So let's not, shall we? See, so just tiptoeing through like you would in the wet. Not that the wet makes any difference in this game. Oh, of course, Eddie. You couldn't do this one thing for us, could you? You couldn't just f stay where you were. Like, the bad start was fine, but did you have to suck that hard? So I'm just trying to pour more water on him, figuratively speaking. So he, so he goes beast mode and takes second back. Oh, I don't like how the car moves through that section. That feels like it's going to start bouncing. And then that was just... That was just needly flamboyant. <laughs> that corner was like... You know... Th that salt dickhead. Just... Just over the top and not necessary. Right, I need to stop talking about... <laughs> about morons and just focus. I mean, not the best, but I prefer it to do that than, you know, spin forever. Oh, 
Oh, I'm getting that lag again that I experienced in Monaco. It's coming past down the start-finish straight. And I think it was visible on the footage last time, so you might be able to see it this time. It feels pretty smooth, and then it just feels like a frame rate drops or lag or something while we're going back past the pits. Add it to the feature list. <laughs> It's bullet time, that's what it is. It's just doing, like, super slow-mo. Ahead of the Matrix. So ahead of its time. Such a, such an unbelievable game. Ooh, big changes lower down the order. Verts was in the points and he's fallen out. Ralph Schumacher was in the points and fallen out. But Hacken has worked his way back in. And Heinz Harald Frentzen now takes up a spot in the top six. Oof! Oh, crap. That's me losing focus. I was just thinking, and I was going to say it coming down this straight, that a wet race in Montreal, usually you think, oh, great, room for a banger. And this is, quite possibly, the dullest race of the season so far. More so than Catalonia. <laughs> at least had some scrapping at the beginning of that. But, incredibly, we've... We are holding it. I don't know if it's me, but I feel like the car is doing more violent bobbing than usual. I don't know if that's because I haven't really been paying as much attention to it, but down this bit, it definitely does. Like, oh, I don't like it. And then straight into a heavy braking zone. Oh. Yes, the other of our two options for that corner, which is just arcing round the solar system. F*** me. Oh, when Irvine's dropped, he slightly um, let himself down on race day. But Schumacher with the win last time out be wanting to announce himself in this championship fight so again I beg of you get past David Coulthard you've done it before you can do it again <sighs> come on now that was almost a bit 2011 Sebastian Vettel there <laughs> a little bit wide you know, the beauty of motorsport is that, you know, sometimes you don't have classics. And that makes the classic races all the more special. So, like, I know this is YouTube and I should probably find some interesting clickbaity drama to make this, this video pop. Um, but I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm just smashing it. Um, I'm lapping consistently. It's... things are fine. Sorry. <laughs> Looking bigger picture, though. Very good for the title fight. I'm not going to do the maths in my head, because then I will crash, because I can't do maths and drive. can barely do maths stationary. But I think it will put us right in the box seat versus... Mr. Chin. Oh my word, I think we're coming up to traffic. Well, I would have been if I didn't get stuck on the grass. That was weird. It's like I was doing a grind on a skateboard. I was just stuck on it. Don't think we've seen traffic since round one in Albert Park.
I imagine that is going to be Ricardo Rosset. Later, losers! Oh, good lord. The closing speed wasn't nice. Okay, uh, Ricardo. Like, blue flags do exist. We know they do, because we saw one pop up randomly <laughs> in Monaco when... It, oh, my... F***ing Christ, dude. Like, I know I've been taking the p*** out of you the last couple of episodes, but in my defence, you deserve it. Your sh Yes, I don't know if you caught it in the last episode, but randomly... When I was passing uh, the pit entrance for, the, I think, the first time in Monaco, my position counter seemed to go to 90. I went to 90th out of 22. It gave me blue flags, even though I was near no one else, and then it righted itself. Like, I didn't even notice it at the time. It was only looking through the footage afterwards. I was like, what the f <laughs> What was that? Oh dear, okay. Minardi now. We are very much into backmarker traffic, but thankfully, we are coming on to the final lap of the race. Right, let's not get caught up in anything. Got a Prost. We've got the other. Oh, good lord, the other. Tear up. What are you f doing, pal? What are you doing? Why are you racing me? He's actually out dragging me. How is the Prost out dragging me? What do you mean? I really hope that wasn't Panis. <laughs> what the f*** is that? Oh, good lord. Well, it's all starting to happen at <laughs> the very end of the race. Right, for the love of God, if this Prost dive, dive bombs me, I'm going to lose my sh**. Good Lord, we survive. Had to be done. A statement win. Beautiful. What a breathtaking win for Giancarlo Fisichella. Breathtaking. That is the word, Murray. Why you were the best? I mean, it felt very comfortable, but in the end, the margin was only 6.4 seconds. But we took the lead, we stayed there, and it was nice and straightforward. David Coulthard, though, does finish second. Hacken and th uh, Schumacher third, sorry, Hacken and fourth. Irvine drops to fifth. Poor start. He had the chance, and he couldn't get past me, even with. My poor launch and poor turn two. Heinz Harold Frentzen holds on for the final point. <sighs> so in the driver's standings, we are now just two points behind David Coulthard. The fact that we failed to score in two races has hurt us. So even though we've won three races, which is more than anyone else, um, yeah, that lack of consistency, those two big honkers. <laughs> Those two very bad races, is what I meant to say, means... <laughs> Irvine now up to 5th ahead of Alacy, and Frentzen moves up to 8th ahead of Verts. In the Constructors, McLaren's still looking pretty comfortable. Gap uh, 33 points um, and 34 points ahead of us. We are just one point behind Ferrari. It's very much becoming our fight this season. In the meantime, the slow burn fight for fourth hots up as Williams get another point. What'll happen next? Well, I can give you some idea of what will happen next. We're going to head off to Manicor in France and first assessment of this is I think this is not going to be a fun one to drive. We've got some long sweeping corners that are usually fun and fast but not in this game and then a couple of hairpins or tighter corners which as we've just seen also not fun in this game. God forbid if I have to play through this championship a second time on this game I will lose my f mind. This has to be a one and done. 
I don't think you understand. It's not just like the bat the, the, the stakes are, if I don't do it, I'm going to have to play through the f thing again. And I don't want to do that. So that's what's at stake. Keep that in mind at all times. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'll see you for another episode very soon.